Today, we're looking at a red ink by Ackerman, their Dutch Masters number seven. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, down below in the description, there's timestamps of all the parts of the video. And if you are in a hurry, you can skip around. But if you got the time, I'd appreciate you if you check out the entire video. You can also follow me over on Instagram. And if you're new here and like ink reviews, I would invite you to subscribe. In order to make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then put the ink into this cross bailey with a medium nib to write for a day and to take the notes for this video. In order to have a standardization in my writing samples, I always use Clairefontaine, Tomoy River, and Rhodia paper, although I do use more papers and those will show up later in the video. Now let's look at the writing sample. I picked this ink up in sample form and to keep my writing sample consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium, and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's take a look at the Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen. It does offer some shading, kind of. Ackerman starts much darker and works its way to a mid-tone and then dark again. It's there, just not a ton of it. The extra fine is a little lighter than the 1.1 stub with no feather, spread, halo sheen, and plenty of spots of shading. Look, quick starts dark, gets light, gets dark. Brown starts dark and gets light. Fox, dark, light, dark, beautiful. Eight seconds to dry. Medium is slightly darker than the extra fine, slightly lighter than the 1.1 stub. It has no feather spread, halo sheen, and offers plenty of nice shading. It just goes from dark to mid to dark. Fox, dark to mid to dark, so it's there. It's just much more subtle than you would see with some other inks. 12 seconds to dry. Scrubby for both show us that there is color variation, and we did get color variation in both of them. Tomoy River, no bleeding, and normal Tomoy River ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather, spread, halo sheen, and no shade. Extra Fine is significantly lighter than the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 9 seconds to dry. Medium is significantly darker than the Extra Fine, and it is darker than the stub. It has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 20 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both shows no color variation. We didn't expect it, and we didn't get it. Rhodia. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. Seven seconds to dry. Medium is significantly darker than the extra fine and quite a bit darker than the stub. Medium has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. 13 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both, see there's a lot of white coming through here, so that's why it's looking lighter. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it and didn't get it. That's this part. I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way that it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down and immediately put it in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see that this is a good, true, prime red. It's pushing its way up very light, watered down from the water, and getting darker as it moves up where it collects. The one on the right, I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And the only thing that strikes me as a little unusual is it traveled farther than the one that I didn't let dry. I know I let this one dry because I marked it with the D, but other than that, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. So I'm not expecting a whole lot of resistance with this ink. Resistance tests are done to see how well this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it might be to clean from your pen. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Not expecting a lot of resistance, and looking how it performed with the highlighter, I am truly surprised. I expected it to blow out and become unreadable, but instead, I feel confident using it in a note-taking situation because of how nicely that held up. Water is reactivating and lifting it completely off the page. You easily see the white of the paper coming through and given just a little bit more time, it would all be gone. 
Now, strangely, pen flush did not remove all of the ink off this paper. I got a feeling that when I dabbed it up, I might have just been basically holding it there for a second. But I don't see pen flush doing anything more than what water did, which makes me say water's all you need still. One third bleach solution. Doesn't need to be talked about, but it's there, so we'll talk about it. It obliterates. It takes it completely off. Please don't use bleach solution to get this out of your pen. I test ink viscosity or flow by using a tilt test, and I've linked that video and put that in here for you. Now, for the inks I've tested, I have found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Ackerman Dutch Masters number seven has a viscosity of 1.36, making this a very, very wet ink. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tumway River, and Rhodia paper. I average those, and for the inks I've tested, I found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with a realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Ackerman Dutch Masters number seven has an average dry time of 12 seconds. Now, that is a faster dry time, but considering how incredibly wet this ink was, that's pretty respectable for how close to normal it's gotten. Instead of finding inks that look like Ackerman Dutch Masters number seven, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I wanted a nice blue-black, and I wanted a blue-black that was named blue-black. I chose Diamine's blue-black, because I like blue-black inks, and I think I just like saying blue-black. Comment blue-black down below. The second writing sample is done on Moji, Leuchtturm 1917, and a composition notebook like science class. In this writing sample, we're starting with Moji paper. Now we get no bleeding, no real ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is significantly lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade five seconds to dry. The medium is significantly darker than the extra fine and quite a bit darker than the stub. It has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade nine seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine shows a lot of color variation, although we got none. The medium shows none, and we got none. Loistrom, 1917 journals. No bleeding, no ghosting, very nice. 1.1, no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. Six seconds to dry. The medium is the darkest tone on the paper with no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. Ten seconds to dry. Scrubby shows us no color variation. We didn't expect it, and we didn't get it. What about a cheap paper? Hmm. Composition notebook like you would have used in science class. No bleeding. Of course we get ghosting, it's such a thin paper. Normal composition notebook ghosting. That's a medium at the top with no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the medium. It has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, three seconds to dry. The scrubby shows us no color variation and we didn't get any and that is all that I have for the writing sample. So what do I think of Dutch Masters number seven? It offers moments of shading occasionally through the writing. Now, red inks for me are things I don't typically care for. This one's screaming on the page to me to where I really don't want to use a whole lot of it. Now, I'm glad that I tried it in a sample and I'm also glad that the sample is used up. It's not something I'm running for a bottle for, but that's because red inks aren't really for me. This is a solid performing, well-behaved ink. So what nib and pen give the best writing experience with this ink? I don't think the nib size matters so much, as long as what you're using is a very wet pen to get the nice darker tone that this ink can put down. A much drier pen really does change the color that you get, making it much, much lighter. If you've made it this far and you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I'm going to remind you to subscribe. Thanks for watching.